Lovely to meet all of you. Uh, my name is Ingrid Thorpe. Um, I'm the Senior Director of Product Management uh, and I'm here on behalf of Message Gears and Swerve. Uh, Swerve is now part of the Message Gears family. So really nice to talk to you today. I'm going to be talking about how to use data to drive personalization at scale. So let's just start with well, what do we think that great mobile marketing looks like? Okay, so first of all, how relevant is your mobile marketing? Uh, it's a really good place to start. A lot of people think that their mobile marketing is quite relevant. So if we have a look at this example, so you may have booked a flight, uh, and when you book the flight, uh, automatically you're going to get some sort of a notification, quite often an email, uh, that offers you for some sort of fast track or speedy boarding. So you think that actually might be pretty relevant, actually, but, but no. Because really, if you think about the basics of you know, going to catch a flight, uh, you could have actually done a little bit more and, and users do expect a little bit more. And if you have access to real-time data, then you can absolutely make uh, something like this a little bit more relevant. So in this example, uh, we know that John is running late. So we can tell uh, that he's checked in you know, really, really late and he might have broken a geofence uh, within uh, a couple of kilometres from the airport. And so we can send him a push notification saying, hey, John, we know that you're running late. Would you like to purchase fast track boarding uh, so you can get on the plane? And we also might know that he's traveling for business. So he may not really want to miss this flight. So, you know, that's an example of really, really relevant mobile marketing that's using all of the pieces of data at your disposal. Now, how personalized is your campaign? Um, so it's really not that long ago that people considered that great personalization was actually using somebody's first name in a piece of marketing. But, you know, times have really, really changed. So if we look at this example, which is saying, hey, you can grab your discount on your favorite drink. Uh, we are using the first name. Um, and it says Starbucks happy hour starts at 3 p.m. today. Will you be there? So you think to yourself, okay, you know, maybe that looks personalized. But if you look at this example, so this is saying, Phil, we know that you're right around the corner. So first of all, we're using geolocation information there. Uh, we're also saying, hey, you're really close to a particular Starbucks. Um, it's even giving you directions to that Starbucks. And it's also looking at the transactional data. And we know that his favorite drink is a vanilla latte. It's also detailing a very generous discount. So there's a number of data points in there that are personalizing this message, making Phil know that as a brand, Starbucks knows a little bit more about him. Okay, now what about real time? So everybody bandies that, that word around, but what does it actually really mean? And are you delivering campaigns in response to a user's uh, behavior or actually their inaction? that's just as important as responding to their behavior. So you might think that this is a, a great example. So if you have a freemium uh, product, for example, it's a really common pain point um, to try and uh, convert users to a subscription. So you know what's wrong with this example? So it's triggered on app launch. It may seem like a really good idea um, to try and get them to you know, subscribe straight away. But the problem is, is that actually you could actually trigger this based on their own behavior and their exploration of the app. So they may go to access something that's part of your premium subscription, and that's actually a better time to trigger the, um, the prompt for subscription because they actually want to use that feature. They've shown some intent around that, and so it's giving context to the user uh, based on their own behavior within the app. So speaking of context, you know, are your messages being delivered, you know, in the right context for the user? Now, we've all seen these kind of prompts. So every time you download an app, uh, this is an iOS example, but you're getting the default prompt that's asking you to hand over some sort of marketing permission. Now, you might think, oh, I only really have to think about this on iOS, but with the introduction of Android 13, now you have to think about this for your Android users. Now, what's the problem with this approach? I've just downloaded the app and straight away, I'm asking you for a marketing permission. So the problem is context. So what you could do is you don't have to show 
that, uh, that operating system prompt, you can actually delay that. And if somebody has just downloaded your app, you can actually take them on a proper onboarding experience and give them some context around what you're going to do with that marketing permission. And this approach has a massive effect on your opt-in. So we know that it can actually increase your opt-in rates for push permissions by about 35%. So again, giving context to the user around why do I want your permission to speak to you? And you have to think about permissions in various levels as well. If, if someone's going to give you access to geolocation, you have to give a really good reason. So Uber, obviously, I'm going to say yes, I want to get home. But a lot of brands push for marketing permissions without very good reasons or good context for the user. Okay, so all of this looks and sounds great, okay? But, you know, we know that, you know, it's not actually really easy meeting customers where they are. And that's because interactions in the mobile world, well, they're fleeting. They happen in moments and there's no real fixed pattern. And, you know, what happens between acquisition and long-term loyalty with your customers, it's not a linear journey. Um, and, you know, we know that a lot of marketing tools, for example, uh, it's very much like on the left. It has a very linear journey. Um, and, you know, so if you're running marketing, which is running very much like the left, which is says customer opens app, trigger in-app experience, wait to see if they do an event and then trigger an experience in 24 hours later. Well, you know, that's not how the world works. That's not how humans work. And it's going to, you know, really prevent your conversion there. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, not just, uh, it's, it's not just the campaigns. There is an outdated um, cloud model that's taking place as well. Um, now, traditional marketing stacks, and hands up if this kind of very complicated stack looks familiar to you. Do you have a complicated marketing tech stack? I'm seeing, okay, I'm seeing some nodding here, here. And, you know, this is actually, most marketers are using a complex set of tools which are all doing different purposes and they require data to be sent to all of these different stacks in order for them to work. So your data warehouse, which is really hugely important, it normally contains loads of information that you want to use in your marketing, it's often kept to one side. And so you may have a cloud-based marketing system. Now, what they're very good is traditionally, they're very good at getting email campaigns out the door because that's what they were designed to do but maybe their segmentation is not particularly good. So you might go out and buy yourself another platform, which is really, really good at doing segmentation. But now you have to hook up your marketing cloud to your segmentation tool, and that provide, that's actually IT work, that's data syncs, uh, and that actually prevents your, your ability to get campaigns out the door. Now, they're still, diff they're still separated from your data warehouse, so all of that data has to go back to your data warehouse. And you might think to yourself, well, what about my advertising initiatives? You know, I need to get people to download my app and obviously advertising is a huge part of that as well. So you might purchase yourself a customer data platform um, and they're sold under various different um, monkeys and they promise the world. But again, you have to hook that up to your cloud-based uh, marketing platform, your segmentation platform, and all of those syncs are costing time and money and we know that they often fail. So that's going to prevent, you know, um, your ability to get these campaigns done. So it's inefficient and it's costly, even if it's working as it should. So what does all of this mean? What does this complicated web of data mean for your mobile marketing? It means that personalization and doing it at scale is really, really hard for brands with millions of customers. And particularly if you have a lot of different brands as well, it becomes even more complicated. But I just wanna say, it's actually not your fault, okay? So I, I just wanna have a bit of a therapy moment here. It's not actually your fault, because it's really, really difficult to do. And you know, a lot of brands are actually missing the mark. So this is a global survey that was carried out uh, amongst consumers who had bought something online in the last six months. And you can see that, you know, they're saying that unpersonalized experiences really negatively impact their loyalty. So you can see that that was in 2022 and 62% are saying that, you know, it impacts their loyalty to a brand. Now, that's up from 45% in 2021. So you can see that, you know, people are getting a little bit more ornery and they really do expect those personalized experiences from these brands. 
And similarly, you can say, and this is marketers and consumers, well, they're not on the same page. We've got 75% of marketers saying, hey, the stuff that I'm doing is great. It's really personalized. It's really engaging. But we've got consumers, um, they're saying, well, hey, there's only 48% of us saying that we get really well personalized campaigns. So there's a little bit of a divide here in you know, what we feel marketers are doing and what consumers feel they're actually receiving. Okay, so what can we do to deliver mobile experiences that unlock the real value that we've talked about and meet these growing customer expectations? Well, the first thing that you need is you need the right tools, okay? You really need the right platform. Um, and, you know, that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. You need a platform that can really focus on delivering real-time relevance. And, you know, Swerve, as you may or may not know, we came out of the mobile gaming industry. And so at our core um, is the ability to customize every single aspect of a campaign, you know, whether that be uh, a subject line, whether that be content or a call to action. And it's all built to be frictionless and very easy for a marketer to use. Because we know that a lot of marketing teams have a huge team of developers that are helping them do these campaigns to get them out the door. So Swerve in-app messaging, it doesn't use HTML. Again, from our, mo our background in mobile gaming, uh, we've developed a, a codeless environment for in-app messages. And what that means is that every, every couple of seconds, we are polling to see if a user qualifies for a campaign. If they do, we locally cache that content on the user's mobile, and then we're just waiting for those triggers to trigger those campaigns. And that means that your campaign is going to trigger in real time, and it also means that you're free of HTML coding. And that means you can design really interesting and unique in-app experiences, like little tool tips that might be guiding them through different parts of the app. And you don't need developers to help you do all of that coding to get your campaigns out the door. Um, and the most important thing is it's not going to look like marketing. You can actually design something that looks part of the native experience. As soon as you see some sort of HTML, it takes a little bit longer to load and that puts a bit of a psychological block in the user's mind. Oh, it's marketing and they're going to switch off straight away. And then what's also really important is that you, you have all of the advanced triggering tools so you can trigger those experiences at the right time. Now, that could be a certain behavior that they're performing on the app. Maybe it's something that's date or time based. Maybe it's geolocation based. Maybe you want to show them a completely different experience based on an ad campaign that they may have saw that brought them to the app in the first place or it could be a completely external signal, something that might have happened with another uh, external system, a customer, uh, they might have put in a customer support call, and you wanna make sure that that data is influencing the campaigns that they've seen. Um, and while we're talking about um, you know, triggering, we've also gotta think about you know, the data that you're using and accessing for segmentation. So the Swerve SDK will give you all of the behavioral and event data that's happening all over the mobile uh, device with our SDK. But you know, you marketers often don't get access to things like customer support data. So you, know, you don't wanna trigger an upsell campaign to someone who has rang up your customer support center and is angry. You know, there's nothing more annoying that's going to turn someone off. And that generally happens because they're placed into a segment because the marketer doesn't have access to the right data sets. And as I've just mentioned, we're not just talking about mobile now. So what I generally say is it's really critical that you follow the eyeballs. So I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time going from my phone to my laptop, and then I might sit down in front of my smart TV or some sort of OTT or set-top box as well. So Swerve offers SDK support across all of those different screens. So that what that means is you can unify the behavior as somebody moves in between screens, and you can actually use that data to determine what is the best channel for me to be communicating. Should I be sending them a push message? Should I be sending them an SMS? Maybe email is right, or maybe I need to pop up a message while they're sitting in front of their smart TV. 
Now, the other thing that's really important is that a lot of vendors are going to offer in-app experiences that break your experience. So we've all seen an overlay and it stops whatever you're in the middle of doing. So this is really important for like a utility app. If I'm on a telco app or a banking app, I'm there to do a purpose. So you breaking the experience with an overlay can be very frustrating. So that's why Swerve offers something called embedded experiences. So embedded experiences allows you to trigger any kind of campaign that is directly embedded in the app UI. And you can use all of Swerve's triggering capabilities as well. Now, the beauty of this is it doesn't look like marketing. It looks like part of the app and you are able to start playing around and A-B testing product experiences. So you can see here that we've got a personal message for someone here who is obviously a Manchester United fan. So all of this has been dynamically personalized. And when they come into the app, it's a completely different experience for them. So again, you know, not just relying on those in-app overlays, really taking control of the entire in-app experience and not being limited to one format. You know, you may see uh, other vendors offer embedded experiences, but it might just be a content card, something very simple. With Swerve, we allow you to do absolutely anything. We've got some great customers that have done moving carousels, all sorts of amazing uh, implementations, which all are natively rendered and look like they're part of the app. And it's really important that you meet all of your users across every stage of the customer life cycle. So a lot of marketers might focus on revenue. Obviously, we've all got a, lie, a number and we've got to hit it. But in order for you to make that revenue, you need to make sure that you're focusing on all of those phases. So I'm not going to go through every part of the phase, but I actually do want to focus on a really relevant customer uh, user case study, and this is on activation. So one of our customers is 3UK. Do we have any 3UK users in the room? Okay, we do. I don't know if you've onboarded recently with them, but one of the biggest problems that a telco has when they're onboarding customers is that telcos offer a lot of different products these days. And so the onboarding experience there's a lot of things that they need them to do to get their product up and working and also make sure that they've opted into the various services so 3UK can give them a great experience. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to um, give a unified onboarding journey and they wanted to make sure that they use data to personalize every single step along the way. So what they did is they used all of the behavioral events and they also gathered user preferences using Swerve surveys so they could make sure that they prompted them on every single step of the onboarding journey and also ask them, how often do you want me to talk to you? And, you know, how personalized do you want those communications to be? So, you know, I think the results are pretty clear. So uh, there was a 79 increase percent increase in revenue in a single business quarter. And, you know, not only were people completing the onboarding uh, experiences, their uh, opt-in went up, they were also generating more revenue, which goes to show that, you know, when you take a personalized approach, when you start listening to all of the data points that customers give you, you absolutely will get results. Now, we've spoken a lot about data. So let's talk about access to data and how you can get better access to, get to data. So what happens when you, you can't get access? Well, you can't be relevant, okay? So, you know, you'll send out a marketing ca campaign simply because I'd like to do it this way, but I just don't have that data feed to do that. I can't get IT to set it up for me, okay? I can't be fast. So, you know, whether that's from getting an accurate uh, audience count or getting the segmentation that you really like to capitalize on some sort of last minute journey or an event that very commonly happens in the mobile space. I can't personalize. So, and this is what leads to the Starbucks example that I showed you before. They're doing the personalization that they just can based on the available data that is around them. And the last one, and I think this will all make sense to you, I don't have any budget. So a lot of those data syncs that I was talking about, that requires you bringing in an IT team and you, not, you might not be on their roadmap, which means you know it's going to be another couple of quarters before you actually ever get access to that data that you need. 
Now, that's why Swerve is hugely excited to become part of Message Gears, okay? So Message Gears alleviates this data friction by putting uh, you right in the center of uh, our platform. So Message Gears sits directly on top of your data warehouse behind your firewall, and this eliminates the need for expensive and time-consuming cloud SaaS-based integrations. Uh, and it's your data. So we don't believe that you should be paying for the access of your data or spending time syncing it with any kind of cloud-based marketing platform. So, you know, you may be using a, a SaaS-based platform at the moment that is accessing your data warehouse. You could be using BigQuery or Snowflake, or you, maybe you have like an older in-house database, but they might be charging you for that access and that syncing. And that's a hidden cost that they don't really like to talk about, but it's certainly something that we like to talk about because we believe having easy access to this data is really critical because not only does it make setting up your marketing secure, it removes a lot of the latency problems that you have with all of these data syncs and maintaining them. Okay, so if you, if you buy a system like Message Gears and Swerve, well, what are the things that you won't have to deal with anymore? So the first thing is you're not going to have to wait days for your data to sync between systems because, again, we're sitting on top of your data warehouse and all the marketing campaigns that you send, as soon as you send them, that data is going back into your data warehouse so you can make even more decisions. If you need message gears to syndicate that data to other platforms, potentially Facebook, Google for advertising, message gears can absolutely support that activity as well. And here's a classic example of a customer of ours uh, that really, you know, Message Gears has massively changed what they're doing. And their name is Home Depot. So they really, really struggled to send personalized offers. It took them around two weeks um, and, you know, more than a day to even respond to an abandoned cart message. And they were using Salesforce Marketing Cloud and Unica. So they switched to Message Gears and they connected up to BigQuery. And, you know, they did that at a fraction of a cost. The implementation was done in less than a week and it facilitated a huge change in their campaign. So you can see a 15% increase in their engagement rates. They were doing personalized emails within an hour instead of seven days and a 60% saving in their marketing software costs. And that's huge if you think about your bottom line and, and how you're operating today. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is, you know, you may be suffering from limited personalization and, you know, really struggling to get relevance at scale. So another one of our customers is Expedia. So Expedia, again, they were a Salesforce Marketing Cloud customer. I'm sorry, do we have any Salesforce Marketing Cloud customers in the room? No, no one's going to admit to it. And, uh, and what they were doing is they were finding it really impossible. Expedia has a number of brands. It's not just their brand. They have a number of uh, travel customers that works underneath them and all a plethora of apps. So they have 16 brands and they're working globally and they, they just couldn't build the templates and have the access to data in time. So by moving over to Message Gears, you know, they're using a single campaign template and that campaign template is being used to personalize every single aspect of their campaign. So, you know, a lot of dynamic content there. Uh, and their KPIs have increased across the board by 38%. So some really huge numbers there. So just in summary, if you really want to take control of your campaigns and drive personalization at scale, you really need the right tools in place to allow you to do that. So you need the right platform, you need the right uh, tools that work for mobile that can, can, can res respond to those fleeting events moments that we know are taking place across mobile apps. And you need to have access to your data all the time. You don't need to rely on your IT and your data team and all these expensive sinks. You know, so most platforms won't support you with this. They just expect you to get on and create that. Uh, with Message Gears, you can have access to any data point that you want. And, you know, that means that you can hyper personalize your campaigns going forward. So uh, we believe we're the future of customer engagement. Thank you very much for um, listening to me today. You will see that on your seat, there is a little business card that has a QR code. Um, please use your phones and uh, you can access a little microsite that will give you uh, more information. 
But if you have questions, I'm more than happy to take them. You will have to give your question to a microphone because this is all being recorded here. And my colleague, Max, is going to be the, I don't know, Jeremy Kyle style microphone um, handler. So do we have any questions at all? Um, just, I'm not really clear. Is this like a CRM platform or is it more like a customer data platform? It's a great question. So, uh, and there's so many acronyms for platforms. So I completely understand you like, well, what is this? So we refer to it as a customer experience platform. And the reason is, is that some of our customers definitely use it like a CDP. So within Message Gears, we have a product that's called Segment. And if you just want to get access to all the data sitting in your data warehouse, um, we have a product called Blueprints, which allows you to basically decide how different cohorts, how you flow through different cohorts. Maybe you want to syndicate that to another platform. So Message Gears will absolutely allow you to do that. Uh, and some of our customers have actually got rid of their CDPs and simply used Message Gears. There's another part of the Message Gears platform, which is called Message, and that's absolutely where you're going to get access to all of the Swerve features that I'm talking about. So if you want to send mobile campaigns from push campaigns to in-app, those embedded experiences I was talking about, SMS, you can even do email, that's all part of the message part of the program. And there's um, also a further pro, uh, part of the, of the platform that allows you to uh, basically pull in all of your data from all of your third parties. So if you had your content sitting somewhere else and you wanted to do that. So there's three parts to the platform. You don't have to buy uh, all of them. You could just buy one. We do have some customers who might be, uh, they might have an, an old contract with a marketing cloud. So they might be using our segment uh, product and they might be using that for segmentation and then syndicating that um, over to their marketing cloud. So it's really flexible. Um, ultimately, we believe you'll get the most value if you use all of our platform, but you're not limited to that if you don't want to. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts, feelings? No? Are any of these points resonating with you? Are you having problems getting access to your data at the moment? I've got some nods here, like the white company, which I have shopped at. What's what's the issue that you're having at the moment? Data in lots of different yeah, and slow. yeah, and slow. Do you have a data warehouse at the moment? Yeah. What what are you using as your data warehouse? <laughs> and you don't have to. Okay, okay, all of you, you could have several, and yeah. some of our customers do have several data warehouses, which is fine. Is it the transactional data that's sitting in the data warehouse that you'd like to get your hands on? Just any data, okay. So definitely if you're having problems getting access to any data, the first thing that I would say is have a look at the things that you can own and shift easily. So obviously if, do you have a mobile uh, vendor at the moment you're sending? Okay, all right, so you are at ground zero. So the first thing that you can do if you've got an app, you need to make sure that you're getting all of those behavioral events off your app. So Swerve offers an SDK that you can implement within your app. And what we will do is we will track all of the, what we refer to as custom user properties. So that could be uh, what loyalty uh, tier they're on, uh, you know, all of the one-to-one -one data that is related to the custom, we track that. But we also track all of the behavioral events within the app. So first of all, that's a huge piece of data that you don't have. So if you didn't do anything else, you could start doing really complicated segments using that behavioral data. But if you've got a data warehouse, that data warehouse has probably the transactional data um, because you have bricks and mortars store. You've also got an online presence. So we could install our web SDK and that could unify your mobile behavior and your web behavior. So you could tell when people are shopping on your web, shopping on your app, and you know you can do all of that without even connecting to your data warehouse. But then the next level is, okay, I want that next level of data. What if they're ringing up customer service, they're angry about something, they could be in the middle of a return. I need to make sure that I know all of that data so I don't send an upsell campaign to someone we're in the middle of that. Ac accessing the data warehouse, that's the next thing to do. And of course, because we are behind your firewall, uh, we're not like another SaaS marketing cloud. 
That means that you, whoever's controlling your data warehouse, your chief data officer, generally they see a company like Message Gears and they're very happy because it's secure, they have complete control. We don't operate under any kind of data schema, so you can bring in any kind of form of data that you want and manipulate that very easily. Um, our segmentation tool is drag and drop. So again, we're not expecting you um, to, to come with an army of developers if, if you don't need that. Okay. Any other questions? No? All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a lovely day. Uh, my colleague Max and I, we're going to be here, so if you want to come up and chat to us, we'd be lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>